Hi, my name is Joe, and you're watching episode three as part of our 12-week Get Jacked Challenge series. This week, we're talking about body fat. I also wanted to give a quick update on my League of Legends progression. As of this week, I am officially Silver 2. Yep, you heard that right, which means I did progress from Silver 3 promoted in my promotional series to Silver 2. If you saw my stream, you know it was a little rough, but we got there, guys, and I'm going to keep on going. You can follow me and my League of Legends progression at twitch.tv slash healthygamerjoe. So, with that, let's get in to episode 3, Body Fat. <laughs> Before we get into my statistics, let's quickly go over what body fat actually is. As some of you may already know, all humans have a required amount of essential fat within our systems to regulate temperature, provide energy, protect our internal organs, and much more. I don't want to get too deep into what body fat does for us, but just know that we can't live without it. For men, the minimal amount of essential body fat is about 5% and about 15% for women. But it isn't to say that anything over 5 or over 15 is unhealthy. At a certain point for us humans, having a lot of excess body fat can put our health at risk. A measurement of our own body fat gives us a rough idea of how healthy we are when it comes to fitness and nutrition. Notice I haven't mentioned body mass index or BMI until this very moment in the episode. That's because body fat percentage and BMI are two very different things. BMI is a value derived from the weight and height of a person to place them in a category of underweight, normal weight, overweight, or obese. Though used by the National Institutes of Health for population statistics on obesity, BMI does have its drawbacks. Having a lower BMI doesn't always mean they're devoid of excess fat, and oftentimes bodybuilders and athletes can be categorized as overweight or even obese on the BMI scale. With that in mind, we'll be shifting our focus towards overall body composition, or how much of your weight is lean versus fat. This week, I was able to measure my body fat using a machine called the Bod Pod. There are many ways to measure body fat, including skin calipers and dunk tanks, but the Bod Pod uses air displacement to get some pretty accurate readings on my body composition. It's pretty reliable technology, and has been used in the NFL scouting combine for the last decade. In a very small nutshell, the bod pod calculates the difference in volume of air between the subject and the empty chamber. Because hair and clothing have a pretty big impact on volume, I had to put on a cap and strip down to my underwear for the most accurate measurement. It only took about three minutes of sitting inside of what looked like to me a sci-fi cryogenic freezing chamber to get my results, and boy, it was eye-opening. My test results came back showing 10.2% fat within my body. After the scan, I had a chance to sit down and consult with the trainer who operated my bod pod testing, Derek Kincaid. We shared an enlightening conversation, though it was too informal to be considered an interview. Derek told me anywhere between 10 to 20% body fat for men is considered healthy, while that number for women is between 19 and 29%. He stressed how much these numbers are indications of good health, and were aesthetics aside. So for those of you wondering why you're not showing a six-pack despite being in the range of good health, I suggest you aim for a lower percentage in that range. Many serious bodybuilders aim for the ultra-lean range, or under 8 or 18% body fat. Having that low of a body fat percentage takes a lot of work to sustain, especially if you're trying to do it safely. The paperwork I was given at the end of my bod pod answered what was, quote, the best way to lose excess body fat in their frequently asked questions. It said the following, quote, keep in mind that each pound of fat has a caloric value of 3,500 calories. If you combine 250 calories worth of exercise each day, along with reducing your food intake by 250 calories, this would add up to a 500 calorie per day deficit. Over seven days, you would lose a pound of fat, unquote. Now again, that's a direct quote from the Bod Pod sheet, which, according to them, is based on information from the American College of Sports Medicine and the American Council on Exercise. The caloric deficit mentioned in the quote is referring to the average amount of calories you consume each day. 
because my goal is to gain as much lean weight as possible while trying to minimize the amount of fat I'll most likely be adding, I'll leave that information for those of you with goals to slim down to give it a try on your own. All in all, I'm pretty happy with the 10.2% body fat, but the results sheet listed me with a composition of 13.5 pounds of fat and 119.3 pounds of lean weight. If you did the math there, you could calculate my total weight according to the bod pod. 132.9 pounds. Nothing close to the 136.4 pounds I had reported in last week's episode. I was devastated. Yes, I realized that this week I was using a different scale and I did have less clothing on, but the truth of it all is that even after three weeks of heavy lifting and eating, I don't weigh as much as I thought I did, and it feels like I'm farther away from my fitness goals. Before I left Derek alone, I told him about my 12-week fitness challenge of gaining 10 pounds of muscle. He said that for most people, achieving that kind of gain generally doesn't happen, but didn't want to rule it out as impossible. If anything, learning about my true weight gives me that much more motivation to keep going. We're only a quarter of the way in and there's still time to grow. So my final takeaway on body fat is this. For a lot of people, reducing your body fat is primarily a step you should take to live a healthier lifestyle. Having too much fat in excess can lead to health risks like heart disease and stroke. But reducing your body fat needs to happen over a period of time. There's no starving your way out of this one. You're going to have to work for it each and every day through better decision making through nutrition and a consistent calorie burning workout. Although this episode was shorter, I hope you guys were able to enjoy and learn something from this episode. Going through the Bod Pod taught me a lot about human bodies and fat, and I'll actually be going back to Derek to get my final weight and final composition at the end of this whole 12 week challenge. I've also included links to all of the sources that I used in this week's episode, so if you want to find out more and learn more on your own time, check out the links in the description below. As for me, I'm just going to keep doing uh, what I do, and next week we will cover a topic that I have been dying to explore, which is cardio. Does any amount of cardio negatively impact my fitness goal of gaining 10 pounds? Uh, we'll see. Let's find out together. Keep up the comments and questions for each of these videos, and thank you for submitting your own progression updates. I look forward to hearing back from every single one of you. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing, subscribing, and even just watching these videos. It means a lot to me. For now, you guys are amazing people. I will see you next week.